Hello friends, in this video we will be talking about uh, the pentose phosphate pathway which is a very important pathway of carbohydrate metabolism and we will see this pentose phosphate pathway uh, called sometimes also called a hexose monophosphate pathway is a major route uh, the cell uses to make NADPH which is important for biosynthetic reactions and uh, for reducing oxi oxidative uh, damages in cells okay so that's why the presence of NADPH is very very helpful and very very necessary inside cell and this is the uh, this is the actual major step of generating those uh, NADPH now we are having this glucose and different glucose uh, glyc uh, glucose metabolism intermediates like glucose 6-phosphate and we can take them and utilize them via different st set of stages and finally we can make NADPH so this is the actual goal but another important role for uh, this pentose phosphate pathway is to shuffle between the different carbon uh, sugars like here we can see in the intermediate step we are having a ribose uh, ribulose 5 phosphate which is a 5 carbon sugar we can also shuffle between the uh, sedoheptulose uh, 7 phosphate the, which is a the 7 carbon uh, sugar then we have erythrose which is a 4 carbon sugar then we have fructose which is a 6 carbon sugar and we are also having this glycerol dead C phosphate which is 3 carbon uh, moiety of sugar so you can see we are shuffling between 3 4 5 6 7 carbon sugars uh, with this one pathway so that's why this pathway can give rise to many variety of sugars and those sugar moieties can be taken up by different uh, small pathways in, in, in between uh, which is going on rapidly inside the cell and it can deliver energy and it can also produce an enormous amount of NADPH which is really really important for reducing this oxidative damages that, that can be seen inside the cell. Now uh, the pathway consists of two branches: an oxidative branch uh, of two in in uh, in uh, irrelevant <laughs> sorry uh, ir irreversible reactions, and a non uh, and another one is the non oxidative branch uh, which operates in the direction directed by the immediate metabolic needs for the cell. Now this is the oxidative part of the reaction which is irreversible in, in nature. Now this irreversible stage is generating NADPH as you can see in this picture. But the non oxidative step uh, is not actually generating NADPH but it is generating the other type of components like 5 carbon, 3 carbon, 4 carbon, 6 carbon or 7 carbon components which can be taken up by other metabolic pathways other small uh, branch or sub metabolic pathways to generate energy or for the cells need so together they allow shuttling of carbons between uh, five carbons and six carbon sugars as you can see in this case now the first NADPH is produced when glucose 6-phosphate is oxidized to 6-phosphogluconate now this is the important step because it's the first step which is incorporating NADP plus and produce NADPH now NADPH is crucial to keep glutathione in its reduced form to prevent oxidative damage to cell now what is glutathione now if we if we zoom into the, the structure of the glutathione you can see here it is the major reducing compound in the cell and it is needed in large amounts to protect the cell uh, cells like red blood cell from oxidative damage now oxidative damage can be caused by free radicals which are very very dangerous which can kill the cell eventually it, it, it is kept in the reduced form by the action of glutathione reductase this is another enzyme which reduces this glutathione and reduction of glutathione leads up to the formation of SH instead of a sulfur di disulfur bond okay now which in this case it uses the NADPH as a substrate to reduce the disulfide bond of oxidized glutathione that's why so what we are looking at here we are having uh, two, a, two S uh, linked with each other and we need let me take a color for you uh, yeah we are having this we are having two s linked with each other now uh, what will happen in this case so if i change the color i can show you now what will happen in this case we need nadph now this nadph is very very important why we will we are, we'll be seeing in a moment now, nadph is working on it and it produces nadp uh, after the reaction but what it generates it actually produces uh, SH and SH okay so the disulfur bond uh, which was disulfur bond here is converted into SH which is a reduced form now this reduction of glutathione now this is the glutathione if we draw the glutathione then this is the glutathione this is the active active portion of the glutathione is linked li look like this now again now the reduction of this glutathione disulfide bond is uh, mediated by this NADPH. So NADPH is very very important precursor for this purpose.
okay now uh, as you can see here uh, so glutathione can so this is the oxidized form the glutathione reductase can go along with NADPH it can break it apart and it will produce SH and SH bonds okay so this is a very very important feature of glutathione reductase and they need NADPH a decrease in NADPH can lead to oxidative damage which is a severe condition can lead up to the cell lysis so as you can see in those cases it cannot uh, make this glutathione re reduced so in those cases what will happen cell will lyse and the ultimate cause is the death okay so that's why it's very very important to generate NADPH because we need to keep supply uh, glutathione uh, we need to keep reduce this glutathione because glutathione is very very active in those cases so we need to make it reduced now to make this reduce we need this NADPH along with the glutathione reductase enzyme to properly work now in this case the enzyme uh, which converts glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconate gluconolactone sorry 6-phosphogluconolactone <laughs> <coughs> the enzyme is called glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase. Now, as you can see, the <coughs> any kind of dehydrogenase reaction inside the cell will generate NADPH from NADP or NAD, uh, NADH from NAD. So, in this case, this is also a dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, you can see in this picture that uh, this is the, uh, the change in, in the structure uh, that this CHOH is there, then it, could, it travels the, uh, at the, this place and it will produce a 6 phosphogluconolactone. Okay. Now move on to the second step. It is then further converted to 6-phosphogluconate. So 6-phosphogluconate uh, is much more complex form of 6-phosphogluconolactone. As you can see again in this case, this is a further rearrangement and, and the breaking of this two, uh, this bond uh, with the help of uh, water. So this is a hydrolysis and the enzyme uh, is responsible for that is lactonase because 6-phosphogluconolactone is a ring or circular form and the circular form is, is broken with the help of the hydrolysis via the water and right after that it will produce 6-phosphogluconate now 6-phosphogluconate is produced now it is very very simple and linear structure now after the 6-phosphogluconate formation there will be another step of generating NADPH and the second NADPH is produced when 6-phosphogluconate is oxidized at third carbon position to give an enzyme bound beta keto acid which is then rapidly and readily decarboxylates to yield ribulose 5-phosphate now this is uh, um, the 6-phosphogluconate and NADPH is generated via the dehydrogenase reaction again the enzyme is called 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase and then the carbon dioxide will leave the place so this is the carbon dioxide this part of the region is the carbon dioxide it will be released and it will produce this part and this is called ribulose 5-phosphate so what we lost in this case we are, we are dealing with 6 carbon molecules we have lost one carbon as carbon dioxide so we end up with 5 carbon molecule now this 5 carbon molecule is ribulose 5 phosphate now the key point about this enzymatic reaction is that the, the decarboxylation of the beta keto acid can occur spontaneously but it is faster with the dehydrogenase enzyme okay so this this part of the reaction it can occur spontaneously because it is having a higher del g negative value but it if it needs if it has uh, the presence of uh, 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase enzyme then the, this reaction will be will be faster that's why it is uh, done in this way now uh, now the fourth step of the reaction is the irreversible uh, is in a reversible step so whatever reactions we have seen before are the irreversible these three steps are irreversible and this is the fourth step and from now on all the steps are reversible now epimerase inverts the configuration of ribulose 5-phosphate around C3 to give a xylulose 5-phosphate it's just an epimerization as you can see in this case now let me change the color it will help you to understand now this is the part this is the carbon which is the carbon number three the just flipping of this hydroxyl in this opposite orientation it will change the epimerization and it will produce xylulose 5-phosphate from ribulose 5-phosphate and the enzyme involved in is epimerase enzyme now the sixth step uh, is alternatively ribulose 5-phosphate can be converted to ribose 5-phosphate uh, again uh, for using biosynthesis of nucleotides because ribose 5-phosphate is a very very important ingredient for nucleotide synthesis now here <coughs> 
what is the difference as you can see in, in this case j just just the shuffling of this type okay so just th this is another type of isomerization between this rebulose 5 phosphate so you can see it could be epimerization it could be isomerization of rebulose 5 phosphate which can give rise to either xylulose 5 phosphate or ribose 5 phosphate now all these derivatives are 5 carbon so we are just shifting from 5 carbon to 5 carbon so no carbon addition or deletion in this case now the key point about this reaction is this although the substrate and enzymes are different the chemistry of the isomerase reaction is just like it for the two isomerase in glycolysis we have seen the isomerase reactions in gly glycolysis but whatever enzymes are differing and whatever things are differing but still the process of isomerization and the mechanism of isomerization almost remains similar in this case too now let's move on to another step uh, and further process the rest of the non oxidative pathways uh, uh, repetition of a of, of a theme and aldolase and ketose are used as substrates in the irreversible reactions to produce another aldose and ketose as products so we utilize one aldose and one ketose and we utilize them to produce one aldose and one ketose but different orientation or different carbon containing compounds the direction of this reaction is not allosterically controlled but responds to me metabolic processes at top and the bottom of the pathway so you can see here this is the ribose 5 phosphate in this case and this is also xylulose 5 phosphate in this case now what is the difference between ribose 5 phosphate and xylulose 5 phosphate we know they are isomer isomers and ribose 5 phosphate is a keto and xylulose 5 phosphate is a aldose okay so ketose and aldose are there so what we will do here we are having this thymine pyrophosphate in this case it is acting as a cofactor for establishing this reaction properly and then it will produce uh, pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate now you can see the net amount or net amount of carbon remains the same so the net carbon for uh, this reaction ribulose 5 ribose 5 phosphate and xylulose 5 phosphate are 10 carbon molecules uh, 10 carbon atoms sorry and then the reaction uh, is after the reaction we can find uh, the 7 carbon molecule here and 3 carbon here so ultimately 10 carbon atoms here at the end of the reaction but uh, the type of molecule that are generated are changed and they are totally different from the substrate molecules now in this case pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate which is here uh, a keto and the, the glyceraldehyde C phosphate which is an aldose type of molecule so what we are doing we are utilizing one aldose one ketose and we are producing one ketose and one aldose okay now the enzyme involved in this reaction is called transketolase because we are transferring this keto group from one place to another place so simply as you can see in this picture we are simply transferring this keto group to here and it will lead up to the production of this three carbon molecule so these two carbon molecules are dragged off from this place and added to this ribose 5 phosphate remember so that will generate this reaction and <coughs> the cofactor is thymine pyrophosphate as we have discussed and the key point is uh, about this reaction is the role of the thymine pyrophosphate is in in the reaction is similar to its role in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex we have seen the reaction of thymine pyrophosphate in pyruvate dehydrogenase complex it acts as a two carbon carrier by binding to uh, the keto group and promoting the breaking of c2 and c3 bonds so we are having c2 and c3 bonds in between there so one two three so we have to break break these bonds and thymine pyrophosphate is actually helping us to break this bond between c2 and c3 by carrying two electrons and giving them to this carbon molecule here now right after the breaking of these two bonds it carries this two carbon uh, carbon um, compound and it will take this and attach uh, it to the first carbon position and it uh, and it will produce the cytoheptulose 7 phosphate from ribose 5 phosphate okay so that is the basic scheme of the reaction in this case now uh, then we can also find uh, uh, the other type of reaction this is also uh, it's the same kind of reaction that means we are utilizing one ketose and one uh, aldose and it will produce one aldose and one ketose now in this case pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can be utilized because glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is a aldose and pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate is a ketose and we can utilize it and it, we can produce uh, erythrose 4 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate however the total number of carbon uh, before the reaction and after the reaction remains the same which is 10 but uh, the orientation and the arrangements are varying and it varies the number of carbon cyclic molecules now, erythrose 4 phosphate is a 4 carbon and fructose 6 phosphate is a 6 carbon molecule as we all know now again in this case the enzyme involved is called transaldolase now what we are doing in this case we are uh, just uh, changing we are just changing this aldolase condi conditions like so we are transferring this this part so what we are doing we are uh, 
we are taking this part we are again uh, again breaking uh, this part from 3 and 4 carbon position and we take this keto group and we attach them with glycyl DRC phosphate to yield fructose 6 phosphate and rest of the chain of the pseudoheptylose 7 phosphate remains as it is like erythros 4 phosphate okay so the key point about this reaction is that in trans ketolase and trans aldolase reactions the keto sugar is always the frag fragment donor and is shortened while the aldose is always fragment acceptor and lengthened so remember in all these cases so whatever uh, we are dealing with in that case we are always dragging about talking about t taking this uh, ketose uh, sugar portion and we take them and we attach them with this aldo sugar so aldo sugar always acts as a receptor and keto sugar always acts as a donor okay so it will receive this part so after receiving this part it will generate this as uh, we have seen here and after uh, leaving this part it will generate this blank portion or this is the seven carbon molecule three carbon is lost so it is a four carbon molecule now now three carbon which is lost is not actually lost it is gained by this aldo sugar it will produce a six carbon molecule Okay, so this is just simple orientation, just taking up and putting it somewhere else. That's what is actually going on. So in all the time we are taking it from keto sugar and all the time we are placing it to the aldo sugar. Okay. And now uh, this is another uh, round of the reaction. Again, you can see here we have uh, fructose six phosphate and glycyl D three phosphate. They, these two things can act together as substrate, and it will produce erythrose phosphate and xylulose five phosphate. Again, notice that the total number of carbon um, atom remains the same before and after the reaction. And again, the keto sugar from the keto sugar we are taking it and we are attaching it. Uh, to the aldose sugar. Now, uh, if we need to break the bond between two and three, then you must need the cofactor thymine pyrophosphate because it will donate the two electrons and it will drag. It will help to break the bonds between C2 and C3 and take this part uh, with itself and attach them uh, into another uh, sugar mo molecule. Okay, so that's what is actually happening in all these cases. So remember that this pathway contains several glycolytic intermediates. When the body needs ribose 5-phosphate for the formation of nucleotides, it can be produced either through the oxidative branch uh, uh, backward uh, through the non-oxidative branch from these glycolytic intermediates because it can be easily taken because you can see in this case that we are having ribose 5-phosphate and from here we ca it can produce nucleotide now gl glucose 6-phosphate is there as a primary substrate it can be uptaken by the glycolysis pathway and can go through the glycolysis so again these are the feeder pathways of this pentose phosphate pathway and you can see how much important this pathways really is now you can also produce this glycerol DHC phosphate fructose 6-phosphate so this these things can also be uptaken to throughout the glycolysis to carry out the glycolysis pathway all the time so you can see this uh, pathway is linked with many several uh, layers of glycolysis and many several other pathways and this is very very important pathway to be operated inside the cell to maintain the balance of NADPH and also uh, properly functional uh, proper functionality of uh, the glutathione uh, glutathione reductase and glutathione enzyme and also uh, it is in, uh, very very important for the biosynthesis of nucleotides in many different cases okay so that's it and I hope it will help you thank you